Okay, so pedal to the metal and let's pick up the pace. Let's get moving quite literally. So if you remember, by holding down the middle click on your mouse, you are able to orbit. And what that will do is that it will snap you outside of the camera that we have set up in this project file. Quick reminder, the project file is free to download. You find it on ArtStation and you get there by following the link in the description. Also, as a reminder, the screencast keys are over here so you can see what I am clicking and typing at all the time. And like I was saying, when you have a camera that is set up and, and you're looking at it from the perspective of the camera, if you move your view, you are gonna snap out of it. How do you go back to the view of the camera? You do that by pressing zero on the numpad and that will go back to a view from the perspective of the camera. But we will get into this in more details later. Today is all about learning how to move objects because so far I've showed you how to move around orbit pan but how do you actually move the objects not just your view so what you want to do first of all is reactivate the overlays and then if you'd like to you can go into rendered view and we are going to see some colors although if your computer cannot sustain it you can stay in the solid viewport shading or the material preview it's all the same now you want to click on something like this monkey head which trivia fact it's called suzanne and it is somewhat the mascot of blender it's like an iconic figure of blender historically <laughs> so as you can see um a gizmo with arrows has appeared and it's color coded just like the gizmo that we reviewed in the previous video. So you have axis and the red uh, axis represents the X axis, the green is the Y and the blue is the Z as well as the planes. Okay, so um, what you want to do? first thing is press G as in grab and now you can move the object now you have not committed to this change yet and you do that by left clicking so now you have committed to that change and the object has been moved you can undo that by doing ctrl Z like in every other software and to review it one more time, you can press G as in grab and move things. And then if you press right click this time, instead you will cancel the operation. So you will not commit to that change. Now you can concatenate commands to Blender. So if you press G and then you press X as in X axis, now you are moving the object exclusively in the X axis, which again is color coded with red. If I change my mind, I can now press Y, for example, and now I am moving only on the Y axis, and the same is true for the Z axis. So I'm going to press Z, and now I'm just moving vertically, okay? And then again, left click to confirm, and now you have committed to that change. So you press G for grab, and then you can press other commands to, for example, express whether you want to move something along just one axis. All right, now I have gone back to the initial position, and I want to show you a few other things that you can do with the grab command. So we are going to press G to move and grab, Z to move vertically, and then I'm going to press 
one, and then zero, and then zero. And now I have moved my hand by exactly 100 centimeter. You can see that because on the top left corner right here, you are seeing the command that you are prompting uh, to Blender, okay? And once again, I'm going to left click to confirm and now the change has been made. And if I wanted for some reason to change something, like I wanted maybe to move it of 150 centimeters, I have an opportunity to make some changes here before I click away. So now I could type 150 and it's going to get moved by 150 instead. All right. So not only you can concatenate letters to give specific commands, but you can also type numbers that are going to determine how much an object is going to get moved in a precise and controlled fashion. Again, Control Z and I'm back to the original position. And the next thing I'm going to show you is that if I press G and I press Shift X, now I am excluding X from the movement, but I can move along the Z axis and the Y axis. Okay. So not only you can select or designate a specific axis that you want to move along, but you can also exclude it. Okay. So super quick review, G to grab, concatenate with Z, X or Y, or press Shift Z or Shift X or Shift Y, and you can either select an axis or exclude it. And then any number to actually move it around in a precise and controlled fashion. Okay, now guess what? Uh, there are two other things that you can do, which are rotating the object and scaling it, and they just work the same exact way. So you can press R to rotate the object. Okay. And now what you can do is press Z to rotate only around the Z axis, X, X axis, Y axis, Shift Z. Now we are only moving around X and Y. Okay. And so on. So as you can see, the commands are also modular and they follow the same logic. Now, another thing that not a whole lot of people know about rotation is that you can actually press quickly two times R, like RR, like a double tap, and now you're able to rotate from the perspective that you're looking at. So from the point of view that you are at in this precise moment, you are able to rotate that object. Why is that useful? Well, sometimes you are trying to position objects in a certain way, and this is much more effective than just being rotating around a specific axis and trying to position it like in this way. Sometimes it's just easier to double tap R and be like, ooh, and now I have it like this okay and now moving forward for the scale command you press s as in scale and then you can scale freehand or you can scale along just one axis okay so you can either scale proportionally or along the axis and the same exclusion commands will also work okay so now you know how to move yourself around the 3D space and also how to move objects around. Cool, before we wrap this up, I want to show you two more things. Number one, if you press Shift D, you have now duplicated the object, okay? So D as in duplicate and you activate this with Shift and D, okay? Now I've pressed right click 
which has left the duplicated object in place. So right now it is precisely overlapping with the original one, but it is still there. And I know this because right here in the outliner, I can see that now we have Susan.001, which is the copy of the original Susan. Okay. So that's that, which is by the way, the equivalent of pressing command C, command V, and now you have also copied the object, okay? Although that is gonna paste it in the collection that you have selected. So it just so happened that I had my MISC collection selected, and so that's why Suzanne 002 ended up over there. And now last thing, is introducing you to the pivot point. So the pivot point is the point around which the object is rotated or from which the object is manipulated. Imagine it as the handle from which you are grabbing the object. So right now the pivot point for Suzanne is this orange dot, okay? And as you can see the Gizmo is positioned, centered around the pivot point, okay? So if you select instead, for example, the wall, okay, you are going to notice that the pivot point is offset way to its right. So if I press R and then Z to rotate it around the Z axis, you will see that it is actually rotating around that point, okay? Okay, so that wraps it up for this video. And in the next video, we're gonna take a look at the object interaction modes. And we're going to learn how to actually move the pivot point around because you can do that. And also we're gonna figure out what this thing is.